Hey, uh, count to 20 for me. What? Hey, come on, just, you know, count, count, count to 20 for me. Why? Come on, man, just, just humor me a little bit. All right, uh, zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. U, V, W, X, Y, Z, one, zero, one, 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 two, one, three, one, four. There you go. What? Counting to 20 should be absolutely dead simple to do. We're all taught it from an incredibly young age and I can do it in about four different languages. However, when I did it in that opening, it sounded like I had a bit of a stroke. Speaking of which, you smell toast? You see, the problem is, is that everything about our daily lives is pretty much controlled by computers, but computers don't count the way we count. Oh, really good. So how do we count? Well, depending on when you were born, that could change pretty dramatically, but uh, we primarily use a system called the decimal system or base 10. Ugh. There we go. One harmonic balancer. And I need to get this crank trigger wheel onto this harmonic balancer. And this trigger wheel happens to have one, two, three, and four little nubs for timing. However, it could have many more than that. It could have five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ooh, things get interesting once we get past nine. If we look at this absolutely adorable TI Insight data terminal, we can see that right along the top row here, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then at the far right, we have zero. But that's a little curious because zero is less than one. So why is it on the far right? And honestly, I don't have a good answer, but this does give us an indication of what we do once we want to go past the number nine. You see, every number imaginable, from the smallest number to the largest one out there, can be represented using these 10 symbols. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But when we want to represent a value larger than nine, what we do is we loop nine back around to zero and we carry a one into the next place over. So we end up with symbols that look a lot like these on the Smith's gauges of this 1967 Austin Healey 3000 Mark III, which, if Lucas is gonna play nice, will start. Yeah. But I really should go inside where the AC is running because it's starting to get very hot out here. I am covered in sweat and we can see it's almost about to break 99, which means that uh, the place that we've been carrying our one to whenever we count up is full. So we just wrap that one back around to zero and carry a one to the next place. And I am sure that today it's gonna crack 100 degrees out here. For my metric friends, that means it's about 38 to 39 Celsius outside with enough humidity to feel like you're walking through a sauna, so it's pretty toasty. But in here, we've got the AC running full tilt and we're surrounded by computers. So we know how we as humans count, or at least I hope you know how we as humans count. Uh, it would be terrifying to think that you learned how to count from this video, but how do digital computers count? This gets us into something called binary. This Data620 mini computer here is filled to the brim with cards that look like this. These are called VersaLogic and they contain a collection of transistors, diodes, and resistors to create complex logic. But the inputs and outputs to these logic gates are strictly binary. What does that mean though? Well, it runs on electricity and all we've done is we've equated certain electrical values 
to a number. So zero volts is equal to zero and negative 12 volts is equal to one. And we can go through using the front panel on this thing and we can actually set some of these bits here if it was working <laughs> fully that is. We can also reset and clear some of those bits out. What we're doing is we're setting individual gates to either zero or one within the computer here. If we only have two symbols, how are we going to use this to count up to really massive numbers? And we know that computers can count to really massive numbers. They do so on a daily basis. So zero can equal zero and one can equal one, but now I want to write two and I don't have a symbol to represent the value of two. So let's apply the same logic that we used when counting in decimal when we reached the number nine. And what we did there was we looped back around to zero and we carried a one over to the next position. Let's do that here. Let's loop back around to zero, carry a one over to the next position, and we get one, zero. This represents two. And then if we want to represent three, we can just increment that first place again and we get one, one for three. Ugh, now we're, we're maxed out again, huh? So now if we want to write four, we have to loop the first place around to zero and carry a one over to the next one, but that's already at one. So we got to loop it back down to zero and carry the one over to the next one, which gives us one, zero, zero, which is four. And then one, zero, one is five. One, one, zero is six. One, one, one is seven. And we can continue on counting up as high as we want. The problem is, is that decimal doesn't convert very cleanly to binary because if you want to represent, say, the number seven, you only need three binary bits to get there, one, one, one. But if you want to represent, say, the number nine, you need four binary bits to get there. This is inconvenient. So we can solve this using something called octal. And what is octal? Well, it's kind of like a halfway point between decimal and binary. OCT or oct means eight. And in the case of octal, it means that we only have eight symbols to represent values. Those symbols are zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then if we want to represent a value higher than the number seven, we've got to do the same thing that we've been doing with binary and decimal. We have to take that seven, loop it back around to zero and add one to the column next to it. So we get one zero, which equals the value of eight. And then we have one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, one, seven, loop it around to two, zero. And then continue that on until your brain turns to mush because octal is insane. It's absolutely maddening, but there's a very good reason for doing it this way. And that's actually shown pretty clearly here on the front panel for this Data General Nova 1210. This is absolutely a binary machine. We can see that by the uh, lights being illuminated on the front here. However, one zero one zero one one zero one zero zero one zero 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 is a little difficult to understand and parse as a human, but they've done something pretty interesting to make it a little easier on us. They've clustered groups of three bits together. So instead of having to read all of those individual bits as single ones and zeros, we can now read it as if though it were octal, like one, two, six, four, four, zero. If we examine the next one, we can get zero, six, three, six, one, zero. But there is one fatal flaw going on here, and that is that octal is not a power of two. This Data General Nova is a 16-bit machine, but if we're clumping those bits into groups of three, we end up with this single lone switch all the way out here on the end. But what if we could group the switches into collections of four? Then we would have a perfect division all the way across, and this is hexadecimal. If we look at the prefixes of the counting systems that we've talked about up to now, by of binary means two, so there's only two symbols. Oct from octal means eight, so there's only eight symbols. Deca from decimal means 10, so we have 10 symbols. And hexadecimal, well, we can kind of piece together that it means 16. So we have 16 symbols to represent values before we loop back around to zero and add one to the next column. So what are those 16 symbols? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is pretty obvious, but what symbol are we gonna use after nine? Well, many machines like this Centurion right here use A. 
and then B, and then C, then D, then E, then F. And now we've hit our full 16 symbols. So we loop back around to zero and come up with one zero. Now we can see that in practice here on the Centurion. If I do D zero 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 comma zero zero F F and hit return, and we get a series of hexadecimal values that represent the data stored in this array of memory. And we have some pretty interesting stuff in here like F8, A2, B8, A4, 4D, 5A. So those eight bits are represented and conveyed to us as this hexadecimal value, which actually is starting to make a bit of sense, except for when we started this whole journey, I didn't say A, B, C, D, E, F, I said U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. And that's because the year is not 2025, it is instead 1956 and computers are still in their infancy. Bendix is building this G15 general purpose computer. It has around 460 vacuum tubes inside and the beating heart of this machine is the rotating drum memory. But whenever the G15 communicates with any external peripherals, like the typewriter behind me or mag tape units, it's doing it primarily four bits at a time. And so since that was how the G15 was communicating with the outside world, Bendix decided to really lean into this four bit idea and they created something called sexadecimal. Yeah, I realize how that sounds. Um, <laughs> I'm not making it up. It's like literally in the Bendix documentation. It's, it's just, it's hexadecimal. And instead of using A, B, C, D, E, F, Bendix decided to use U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now really, it doesn't matter. All we're trying to do is come up with some symbol to represent values greater than nine. So if you use A, B, C, D, E, F, or U, V, W, X, Y, Z, it doesn't matter as long as the human operating it knows. So that's why I said U, V, W, X, Y, Z in the beginning. But Bendix does something even weirder. One word is 29 bits, one line on the drum can hold 108 words, and there are 31 lines on the drum. And because hexadecimal was still a very new concept at this time, they decided to primarily stick to decimal. Internally, the machine is absolutely binary and we're using hexadecimal quite frequently, but if the programmer is writing code for the machine, they're gonna be doing it in decimal. And I have in front of me here a coding sheet. You would write down your instructions with notes here and mark off what word times those instructions would be placed at. And if we look under the S and D columns, this stands for source and destination. And you can see it's all written in decimal, 28, 31, 29, 20, except for here where it says U0. That's a little weird. And actually it gets worse than that. If we look on the far left here, we've got a uh, list of word times. The problem is, is that Bendix needs to represent 108 word times with just two digits of decimal, which is impossible. So what they did is insane. They count from zero to 99, just like regular old decimal. But once they get to 99, things go off the rails. They get to U0, U1, U2, U3, U4, U5, U6. What they've done here is they have mixed numeral systems. The ones digit is decimal. The tens digit is hexadecimal. So you go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you carry one over. You carry the one over all the way past 100 into U, V, W, X, Y, Z. It is Bendix, man. Bendix, what are you doing? What are you doing, Bendix? <laughs> this is, I don't even know if there is a name for this type of numeral scheme. I have never seen anybody mix and match numeral systems like this before, and I hope I never see anybody mix and match numeral systems like this again, because this is lunacy. <laughs> So there you have it. You guys now know how to count in many different numeral systems, including one that would make you an absolute madman like Bendix was back in the 1950s. And if you're wondering why we spent a full day talking about numeral systems today, it's because I've been working on filming the 
final episode in the Bindix series before that machine goes back to System Source Museum. And we're dealing a bit with programming and the numeral counting system came up and I figured I'd bring you guys along on the journey of madman discovery. So I wanna thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.